Yeah, yeah. 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 Grayson, you just saw a movie. It was a, yeah, what we call a guy's movie yeah. or whatever have you. A lot of testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> a very long time to say, say a simple statement. <laughs> well, Hollywood is not about simple statements. It's about, you know, you get the first act and you blah, blah, you repeat it, then you reinforce it. No, is that not true? Yeah, but Hollywood is about an, uh, is an extension of the empire. Really? That's what you saw in the film? Yeah. How, how so? How so? How do you say this? It's, um, it's, it's where they prepare us to be uh, available for the plans that they're hatching. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're saying that well, the, this, this, this film took place all over the world, or not? Well, I guess, yeah, all over the world, um, a few locations. What I'm saying is that Hollywood is a zone where they do animal conditioning. Well, you're, are you saying that, well, who is the animals? Because this had some, some half animals, half human, what, you know. I claim to be a human animal. I don't know what other people think, but I'm a human animal. And I gave birth between myself and my female partners to three other human animals. And I'm the oldest of the three animals that I'm responsible for. Mm -hmm. so it's how, you get, how, that, how does that relate to the movie that you just saw? The most important thing that is sought after is the space between our two ears. That's it. So when Hollywood does what it does, it prepares us for the next business model. It's not, it hasn't started yet. I just want to see it. Uh, it's an extension. It's where they show us the technology. They make us available. You know, we want to be injected. We want to be tagged. We want to have uh, special features because we feel inferior, we are inadequate, we feel weak and fragile, so we want to get implants. It's all put out in the movie. Mm -hmm. So it's a prep. The whole movie is a, is a commercial for their next line of products and solutions. And uh, as you can tell in the last scene of the movie, the, they created the creature to serve them, they took a human animal, supposedly saved his life, enhanced him biomechanically, and put him into service. And when they failed, when he failed, they remotely shut off the systems that kept him functional. So, what do you say? We create dependency, and then within the framework of the dependency, then we control the objects, machinery, and then we control all the humans down the line. Mm. Well, let me give you my little take, if you will. Now, here's the thing. My think is your most correct, of course, but there are other layers in this thing. The thing things, the, the things that I get to support my point of view, my human point of view, is this, for instance, I noticed that uh, one of the characters wore the number seven jersey for a very long time in the film. Now, in recent history, we know seven stands for Colin Kaepernick. So I have that, I have that mentality of like, hey, I saw Colin Kaepernick in there. I saw his his cause in there. You see what I'm saying? Also, also remember, even though the machines were doing what they do, we they shut down the machines and the ancient, if you will, the autochthonous. It's called the autochthonous weapons rule the day. Okay, now including, the, if, if you want to consider a human being an autochthonous weapon, well, that person even, you know, they, they tried to make that, they tried to make one person, uh, 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 how do you say, uh, a, 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 a vector, you know, a, 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 an agent of, yeah. of change. But even she, you know, changed that up. So for me, I hear what you're saying, but I can look at, I can, I can find some other things that, that reinforces my point of view and also my evolutionary point of view. See, to me, they, they, did, they were just doing the same things over and over and over, trying to keep that same control over and over again. But in that control that they keep, I look at something beyond that. That's it. I, I hear what you're saying, but what I see is, what I see is, the marketing end of it. And what I see also is 
the, how you say, the model that's presented as a solution is, um, is a model that is, what do you say, it never was a competent model, it never will be, and it's the same solution where you have males with the solutions of violence and war. And uh, what I've learned is that for thousands of years we've been playing this war game and we're still in the same situation of in the puddle of war. So I see the marketing end where they're selling the next iterations of their technologies, um, implants. That was a lot of that was being promoted in that movie, implants. And there's, there's a lot of people right now, there's a whole community of people in America who are really wedded to the idea of getting enhancements. And there is a whole promotion in Hollywood, in the movies that preceded this, that came out earlier than this, that did much the same thing, where they're, they're promoting being chipped. I got that. I'm not, I'm not arguing that at all. I'm not arguing that at all. Actually, you, you went to the past thing. I was trying to stick with just this one thing. But here's what I'm trying to explain. I was saying, yeah, that's there. But I saw some other things. You, you, you can embrace that if you want to. But I sort of embrace the whole thing about, again, the autochthonous people. And then, yeah, they may have tattooed themselves according to their, 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 their uh, culture. But that ruled the day. Or if you want to say, in, in fact, that next generation, because they hooked up, the generations hooked up, the, the young girl who's the next generation, right? She's now reunited, re, re, reunited, because the, I, I guess the, the, uh, uh, they were separated because of certain rules of society, but now they got back together. So yes, no, no question, if you want to see that, and you want to go on that road and, and react, that's what I'm trying to say, you can react to that road if you want to, but I'm reacting to something else, that's all. Well, what, what I started off to say in the first place, they took a very long time to tell us something we already knew. You understand? So, but what I'm saying is that they put a lot of poison in water, you know? And what I'm saying is that whether we like it or not, human beings in today's real world, quote unquote, world, are really enamored with technology and technological solutions. So what I'm seeing is that, um, I mean, I don't know if you know this, but Tiokasen had a show today, and he's a Native American who has a radio show, and he brought these people from, I think it was either Ecuador or Peru, or Bolivia, one of those small countries. And they talked about how they are trying to preserve their society and their environment. And what they've done is they've realized that all of the technological solutions, speaking of technology again, are, they now realize that they cannot lean on it and they have become disenchanted with it because they were sold on it initially and they find that it doesn't work. And it's actually costing them their environment and their well-being. And in, in that movie, what you see is uh, the business model of catering to the, the hankering, the insatiable desire for technological solutions. The male, what do you say? How do you say? Males do not give birth to anything except something that's brown, and women can do that too. But women give birth to human beings. And what happens is that the only thing that males give birth to which they compete with females is with their little widgets and gadgets. So when you see that, what you're looking at here, I see as a subtext under this is I see a male competition with the female fertility to produce solutions that don't seem to uh, stand up. Okay, we'll leave it with that. I'll let you have the last word. <laughs>